pair of ass there, she means we be back for lesson number 17. Oh, I'm all gonna, I'm gonna run out of toes. <laughs> I'll have to be taking other people's toes and counting them, I think. <laughs> a little purse on the side with toes in it, you think? Oh, maybe not. Oh, we'll be seeing anyway. <laughs> right. So, lesson 17, we've got lots of fun things to cover this time. We'll be active, jumping about, doing all sorts of things and scaring the parents. Ha 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 That'd be right. So, give me an R! R! Give me another R! R! Put them all together in these though. R! R! That right. Let's get in the mood for some serious pirate. Ha 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 Because today, we're going to cover the cutlass. I know I touched on it before, but I'm going to get into detail about the use of it. I told you I was easy to learn. So I'm going to teach you some of this stuff, right? First, I want to talk about a few different words again, right? We've been talking about words and stuff like that. So we get a bit of the left side and the right side of your brain working, right? You get both sides of your brain working at the same time. Thinking and doing, oh, all sorts of crazy things like that. Good for pirates to be thinking and good for pirates to be doing. That's how we come out all well-rounded pirate. <laughs> like me, well-rounded. <laughs> Give me a <laughs> right, right, right. Wait, I don't think we've done it yet. Come on. Stand and laugh like a pirate. <laughs> yes, that's right. Head to the side and laugh. <laughs> that's it. Be proud. <laughs> right now. What words we're going to do? Fathom was one of the words. You hear that? I don't think I can fathom this. It means work things out, right? No, oh, I don't have a fathom. Well, well. That originally was a measurement. Remember the year of the old feet and inches? Some people still call things feet and inches. Your cat does it sometimes as well, right? Well, measurements, right? They used to be done on body parts, right? And so, feet, you know, feet, all sort of, they went for average sizes. So 12 inches, right, is what a foot was, which is about 30 centimeters now, right? That's about the average size of a man's foot at the time, right, when they decided that. So that became a foot. Makes sense, doesn't it, right? Well, the fathom, right, is the average size of a man from the tip of his fingers when he stretches his arms like that, right? So the tip of my fingers, the tip of my fingers over there, is supposed to be about six feet, right? And that's how they measure it. So a fathom was six feet, right? And that's how they worked it all out, right? All those kind of things they used to do to work out the distances, right? And so a fathom became, because it was a, not a small distance, but one a long distance, so a fathom was what they used a lot of the time to work somebody's measure out, to work out what they were doing and all that kind of stuff. So a fathom was a really popular thing. So it, over time it developed into, oh, can you fathom it? As in, can you work it out? Or well, yeah, how far it is? You know, that's how... Fathom and it became the word, right? Just things have changed after the world, after a while. Now the other word I wanted to talk to you about was Mayday. You heard that? Oh, Mayday, Mayday, we're sinker, we're sinker, that kind of thing, right? Mayday. So you think, what's May got to do with it? People think more in May. People with birthdays in May. Are they more likely to us fall into the water and go, ah, oh, Mayday, Mayday? No, no. Actually, it'd be a French word. Maydays, right? It's like M apostrophe A I D E Z or something like that. There's French like throwing Z's all over the place, right? But maydays means help me in French. And of course, anglicised everything as we do, it became mayday because that was the closest thing like that. And that's where mayday comes from. It was basically a French word, kind of mashed up, right? <laughs> a bit like portal. You know the portals? You hear portals? Like the little windows on ships and all that kind of stuff, right? They're called the portals. Well, originally, right? They were, you know, I've got my guns in there, you can't see it, right? Because there's little doors there, right? You've got little doors in there. There's for two reasons. One reason, when you're in port like this, people can't see how many cannons you've got, right? And otherwise, is when the sea's smashing everywhere, right? If you've got these open windows where the guns are, they'll fill up with water, right? And you have all sorts of issues. But when you have little doors, you, you seal them on. That will keep them shut, right? And they'll look called portals. And eventually, they came to all the sort of doors and windows and they became portals, right? On ships and all that kind of stuff. But the French word for door is porte, P-O-R-T-E. All right, and eventually they just got rid of the E, you went port. So portholes is just those holes in the ship we do it, right? Another French word, right? Now the last word I wanted to cover, right, is a bit of a weird one. Because, you know, on the Facebook, we're doing that kind of stuff, somebody posted a thing there that was supposed to be Shakespeare, right? And he was apologizing. He was apologizing for, to all those HSC students out there that are about to study him. And he was apologizing and saying it wasn't his fault. And he called them fuddoxes. And I think he was pretending to be a swear bird. It ain't be a swear bird, right? It ain't me. A fuddox, right? Okay, I want you to know, because I don't want you to get the wrong information from people like fake Shakespeare's, what these things are. A fuddox, right? Remember I was saying about 
you've got the rib right around the keel there, right? The big long one. And you've got those arms that go up each side and then the planks go on. I was saying that the other week. We are talking about the ship, the planks get done to it. But you've got the, right, the ribs of the ship, right? Those ribs, do you know what the name for them is? You guessed it. Furrox. That's what furroxes are. They're the ribs like that. It sort of means, the actual original word came from like foot hook. So, because they come up from the bottom and they hook around, right? And that's where the name come from. But that's what it was. A furrox was a foot hook, right? And that was a Viking word, all right? But furrox is where it all comes from. Just so you're not deceived, right? I just want you to all to know that, right? It ain't no square word. It just means the ribs of a ship, the furrox, all right? All right, good. Now the cutlass. <laughs> Why the cutlass? You know I'm an enthusiast of the cutlass. Why do you say? Why are you so enthusiastic about the cutlass? Well, I think I'll tell you the story of me dear old captain. When I was just a lad, learning to be a pirate. When I was just a wee little fella, learning about the barracks, all right? When I was there, all right? And I was there, my captain, right? He's busy sharpening his blade. Sharpening it, making it really sharp. And he just kept on and on doing it. Every time you see me, he's sharpening his blade. And I said to him, Captain, Captain, why? He spends so much time with the blade, sharpening it up. He said, because it's my lifesaver. It looks after me, I look after it, right? That's what a good pirate does. I said, but surely in these days of pistols and stuff like that, where you put out the gun and shoot them, you know, I told you, I'll carry a couple of pistols, right? You know, surely that's better than a cutlass, because you can do it from a distance. He said, ha, when you run out of shells, or when the gunpowder gets affected by the damp in the sea and all that kind of stuff, what are you going to rely on? And then, without a moment to do it, he whipped out his cutlass and he brought it right up to me nose, centimeters away. And I looked at it just like you're looking now. And I thought, oh, that's a good point he's got. <laughs> and so have I. <laughs> but that is, that's your cutlass. See that? The cutlass. And you saw how quick it is to bring out, right? That's one of the advantages of a cutlass, right? If you had a longer sword than this, right? It'd take you longer to draw out. Naturally, a cutlass is easy to draw out. Plus, we're in a ship, right? So, my roof is low here, right? If I'm swinging widely with a long sword, I'm gonna be catching in the roof. Nothing worse than catching in the roof like that. You can't do anything with it. And all that kind of stuff. But the cutlass, it's got a bit of length, but it curves, and it's not short. And it's also, it's a good strong blade, right? So you can cut your ropes, right? That, and you can cut wood with it. You can do all sorts of stuff, like emergency ropes. And you get a foot caught in a rope and they're flowing off other distance. You can slash it down, all those kind of things, right? And it's short enough, like if we were up close, fighting like that kind of stuff, I could still just put my arm back and I still get the points right in front of you, right? So it's still there threatening. And with a long blade, it'd go past you, or I'd have to have my hand back like that, it'd be all uncomfortable. But right there is all sort of close. You see that? See that right close there? Just the elbow behind there, right? I'm sitting right up close, right? That's how I do this. Now, let's have a look at the blade, right? So it's sharp along this end, right? Right? More sharp down this end of this end. You want this a little bit of blonder right here and totally flat there, because that's going to take a lot of the blows. And you don't want to be a sharp edge blow on there because it'll start chipping and you'll be waking up, waking up, weaken your blades. You don't want to be weakening your blades, do you? And the back, right, that's flat all the way again, because you'll be blocking a lot with that. Use it, it just means it's stronger at the back, right? But you're sharpening up the point here, right? That bit there is short because you want to, so you can do little backward strokes and else do more damage when it's all sharp both sides there. So you have that bit of sharp, but sharp, but still a bit thick on that, right? That's all. And it goes all the way up to your hilt, right? So your hilt has a basket on it, right? A basket, right? Okay, which protects your hand. It's like a shield, you see that? When, you, when you're ready to fight, it's your shield, right? It's protecting you all the way, right? Protects your hands from getting damaged and all that sort of stuff. Plus, you can use it as a weapon. You can punch with it, right? Plus, and the, this bit here is nice and heavy. You can use that to butt down somebody's head or butt them down or even nail in a nail or something. If something's getting loose in the old ship and you want to nail it back, you can do the end of that kind of thing. So it had multiple uses, right? So it was a handy, handy weapon to have, right? But that would be the old one, right? I've got all that. Now, first up, so it's handy for up close, right? That's the whole thing you always about it, right? So first up, I'm gonna talk about your feet, all right? You can't really see my feet, so I'll have to talk you through this, right? So your feet are like, basically, you remember we're on a ship, so we're rocking, you see me rocking all the time because we're on the ship, right? The we're rocking, now you see like, what are you always swearing about? It's because we're on the boat, remember, okay? Okay, but, so you want your feet apart, right? But in this case, because we're sword fighting, right? You want one foot behind the other, but apart. So my left foot, right, all right? Because I'm right-handed, is pointed out that way, right? Back, my right foot is pointed away where I want to go, right? It's pointed up towards the air like that, so, I'm, so that's where I'm going. So I'm tilted slightly, so I'm offering less of a profile, right? If you're like that, you're offering a wide target here, 
smaller target, and I've got more likely to protect with my shield, right? So that's how you stand there like that, right? And how far apart are your feet, right? Well, basically, it's sort of shoulder width apart, but you want it to be like a normal piece, like a normal piece, because you want to be balanced, right? So you want to be balanced so you can move quickly forward and backwards, right? Go forward or backwards, get forward like that, right? So you can do that. And if your feet are that normal, though, you know, that's how we do it. And then if you do a lunge, you take it basically two steps forward to push, to go further across, right? But that's how you are. That's where your feet are, right? So they're there. You're balanced, nice and easy, nice and light. Not weight on either one. You're just there like that. And the other thing, right, with your feet and your movement, right, is when you're attacking, right, okay? When you're stationed down, right, that kind of stuff, you follow the blade, right? You move with the blade, right? If I slash like that, Look at this whole side of my body. You can see it, right? It's all open, all right? Isn't it? You could probably get your blade around or somebody else could come over that. But if I move with the blade, so I'm there, you see, the blade is protecting me, right? Because I've moved in behind the blade. So that's what you do. You move behind the blade as you swing it, right? And that's in your footwork, right? Because then you're ready to react to something else that happens because you've moved in and the blade's there. So if I've got to go on around, like we just do that again, right? If I swung, right? And, got that, and he brings his blade around, I can go pop like that. And I've still moved around and I've moved, right? But if I'm still standing in one place being static, you, you know, you're not giving them a moving target. You want to do that, right? Okay. So the basic slashes, right? We're just giving you a basic course. Because remember I told you the other class. Good thing about cutlasses, is easy to learn, right? So they're just basic slashes you've got to do, right? The prime one is the one we just did, right? Right? So that's the diagonal slash, right? From up, upward diagonal, right? You got the straight down the vertical, right? You got the horizontal. You got the upward diagonal and you've got the straight uppercut, right? Straight up like that, okay? And you can do those down from the other sides, all right? From both sides, and that's your cuts up like that. They're your basic cuts you'll do, right? Now, you don't want to be doing big swingy things like that. You know, you see those ones where they feel the big swing and they're gonna swing all that way up there like that. You don't want to be doing that because look, my sword's up there, his sword's here, I'll well, be in big trouble, all right? So we're doing it quick. So how you do that is all about the grip, right? We talk about the grip. You don't want to be holding it like a club, like you're gonna, you know, blah, blah, that kind of stuff like that. You want the clip right, loose and flexible a bit, you know? You want to be strong enough to hold it, but you want it so it'll conflict forward like that, right? Because that's where you get your speed from, having that flexible grip that you can flick it around, and you can work, and you work quickly, right? So that's where the grip is, right? Not tight like that, but a loose there like that, you know? Firm enough to hold it there like that, all right? And your poles again, right? We're tilted back, so we've got all that there. And so defensively, right? When I'm defending with it, I don't want to be pushing the blades away. Like if somebody's coming for me like that, I don't want to be pushing them right away. You see that sometimes in the movies, like push it right away like that. Because look, well, it makes my arm weak, so if I get pushed down like that, kind of stuff like that. But also I'm opening myself up, right? So all you're really doing, right? Same thing on this side. If I push it right over there, I'm opening myself up, and my arm's weak that way, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm keeping it close. And all I'm doing is deflecting it away from my body, right? So the sword comes across, I push to there, right? Then I'm in attack again, all right? I've got that, or there, I push around, down. That kind of stuff, right? It's only slight movements. You don't want to use too much movements here because it's all about speed and being there quick, right? That's what you do. Keep it close, keep it fast. All right, now we're pirates, okay? We're hit and run, we go in, we're all about speed, getting in, getting out, getting it all done quick, all right? So don't do these big, wildy things like that, all right? And when you do what we're talking about defending, right? There's five basic spaces of defending as well, right? So, first position, I put the sword back in the hilt, right? In my scabbard, right? I put the sword back in the scabbard because the first one is basically straight out of the scabbard. So you pull the scabbard, that be your first defensive position, right? That's one, that's two, right? That's three, that's four, and that's for you. So if we were doing out training, we'd be calling out those numbers and you'd be doing that, doing that, and that'd be the part of your training, you'd have all that kind of stuff like that. Man. But they're the basic ones, right? And again, you're keeping it, you're not putting it right up there, you're keeping it just there, so you're stopping the ball, the blade, and you're there. And also, you see my arm, right? You're making that L shape, right? You're keeping the arm in tight like that, you're keeping the blade pretty much in line with that, because that's the strongest part of your body, right? Right there. One of the strongest parts of your body, right? So you want that, gives you that sort of, uh, Hard grip on it, right? Further it like that, you're gonna get pushed back. But when it's up close like that, you've got that whole frame. Stream. You're basically your whole frame is giving you strength, right? So you're not relying on your muscles because you gotta hold this sword. You know, if you're fighting for an hour or something like that, and the sword being light, you can do that. You can keep going, but you don't. You still gotta hold the sword up. 
and keep it tight. So everything like that, every advantage you can give yourself, that's what you want to do, all right? So that's the basics of defending and attacking. What else we got to do there? Got the close by. Oh, right, the other thing, right? Besides all that, right? The other advantage is, is you're trying to capture their blade, right? If you can catch their blade in there like that, all right? When they clash together, you want to catch their blade in there like that. Because then you can control it, right? You can do that and slash down, or, right? You can pivot off that, bang, hit them with that pit, or even go down and then pull it down across their chest or something like that and do the slash. Right, so that's part of the moves and the tactics you do by using the actual advantages of this blade, right? They're the old cutlass. So you keep it strong, right? No big movements, catch and control, slash, be quick. That's what it's all about, right? Okay. And the other thing you've got, one last point I'll cover about the old, you know, using the cutlass for the old battles, right? Is, you know, a lot of people on these naval battles, right? You know, some of them aren't prepared, like we're taking over their ships, they're not really actually fighters and stuff like that. So they're making, they're picking up makeshift weapons. You know, I told about the blade pins, remember the old blade pins, right? So they've got them as like hammers and they've got picks and all sorts of things they pick up and they start doing that. But those will be short weapons, right? So if they're short, then you can just thrust, right? Just the thrust in and that kind of stuff as they come up, right? That kind of stuff. Gives that advantage. But again, you're not lifting up there, you're losing your advantage, right? Your advantage is to keep it all in toit, all right? Toit, 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 toit. And you can do that. And also, right? You've got your other hand free, right? So if you're holding up with the things, you can reach in and grab all of them. You know, you can tickle them under the chin. You do all sorts of things like that, all right? So you've got all that stuff there that you can do with the old cutlass. And where's such a good weapon, right? The old cutlass. Now, now I've told you all about that kind of stuff, right? And I mean, if you're going to be doing this kind of stuff, I don't mind be talking to your dad, right? Or your mom, I guess. Or your dad, mostly, I think. And uh, getting to do it with you, right? Me and my young fella, we used to... Well, we were went on all these in England. We had sword fights up and down all over the castles and all sorts of things there. We were sword fighting all over the place. We were, ah, be a great fun. All right, but that's what you learn a bit, a few tricks. So next time you have a bit of a wrestle with dad and stuff like that, you know a few things to do. Use your cutlass, all right? <laughs> all right, now, I'm going to finish with one last cutlassy story, right? Just so you know, kind of things that can happen when you've got the cutlass aside. Right? So just one last story. So... There were these old two old pirates, three old pirates, three pirates there, and they're all sitting around having a rum and having a chat and having a chinwag, you know, the old <laughs> two of the fat and doing all that sort of stuff, right? And they're all sitting there, happy as Larry and all that, until one of them goes, ha, you know, I'm the best with a cutlass in the whole world! And they all went, ha, 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 rubbish, rubbish! And without a drop, he leapt to his feet, leapt to his feet and smashed! And cut a fly, a fly, I tell you, in half, straight through, one slash, whoosh. And I, wow, it was amazing. He was so quick in a moment. Ooh. The other guys went, oh, no, 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 the second guy gets up, he says, <laughs> oh, I'm better than you. And then he goes, slash, slash. All right, what happened? Two quick swishes, and he cut the fly, another fly, in four. That's right, swish, whoosh, four bits, just lying there. It was amazing. All right, the third guy, all right, he, he may or may not have been me, right? Gets up and says, here, hold me rum, ha <laughs> ha, hold me rum. And he gets up and he goes, swoosh. And the fly just kept on going, and off like that. The others are there laughing, going, ha 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 ha, oh, 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 laughing like pirates, ha ha ha, and all that sort of stuff. They're laughing and carrying on, laughing and carrying on. And he goes, wait, wait, you best be getting the surgeon. Because that fly be needing a wooden leg. <laughs> That'd be right. Them pirates in their stories, eh? <laughs> all right, now. Give me an R. R. Give me another R. R. Put them all together, Isabel. R. That'd be right, pirates. <laughs> We're ready. R. The end of this lesson now. I think that'd be the end of the lesson. But next week, I might be telling you some stories about Black Bart, I think. Or maybe even I'll tell you about the old diamond theft I did one time. <laughs> one of the stories of the old pirate there. But all sorts of things. Because if we listen to number 18, 1 8, the rest went hungry. <laughs> oh, it's all happening. 18, I don't believe it. We'll get 17 out of the way first. All right, but we're finishing up. I think that's about it. We've done all the damage we can with our cutlasses. All right, hopefully most of the paint is still on around you. <laughs> Ah, that's why it's good to be down here, down in the hole, <laughs> with just me and me good mate, 
Mr. Wilson over there. But for now, I'm gonna whistle us all down so you can go home, go to bed, and dream of pirates and excelsies. Ha 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 ha! my friends! Extra laugh just for the editor. <laughs> so yeah.